Hi everybody, let's finish now a little triplet of protectionist policies by looking at a trade subsidy. What is a trade subsidy? It's a subsidy given to domestic suppliers in order to reduce their costs of production and for them to pass that lower cost on by lower prices, which makes it easier for these producers to compete with worldwide firms and therefore to export their products more easily. So again, it's a very sneaky form of protectionism, this one. Something that's very hard to prove. So we're going to form the same, follow the same pattern. We're going to look at how a subsidy affects the market. We're then going to apply some of the generic arguments for protectionism to this diagram. Uh, and then I'm going to make a second video. Next video will be dissecting the diagram in more depth to give you the key analysis points you need to score very highly if you want to use this diagram and this theory in your essays. Okay, so a subsidy given to domestic supply. Now you know that when a subsidy is imposed on the market that it's going to shift the supply curve downwards. Now because it's given to domestic supplies here, it's going to shift the domestic supply curve downwards. But it's a very tricky diagram to draw. So this is the way I would do it. Start with a given quantity. Now you know that with this subsidy, domestic supply is going to increase, isn't it? It's given to domestic supply, it's going to increase their supply. So I would start with a quantity value, okay, like that, let's call it Q3. Then move up and across, okay, so move up to the domestic supply curve and move across to then the domestic demand curve and then you can draw your new supply curve. Okay, so parallel shift, like that, we'll call that supply domestic plus the subsidy. And the vertical distance between the two supply curves is the value of the subsidy, the numerical value of the subsidy. Right, this new point also tells us the effective price that suppliers are getting. How do we know that? Because that is the vertical distance, isn't it, between the two supply curves. So Q3, they're getting the actual price PW and they're getting a subsidy on top. The value of the subsidy is the vertical distance between the two supply curves, which takes us to PW plus sub. Now, crucially, for you guys to understand this, the price in the market does not change. The price in the market is still at PW, but the effective price that domestic suppliers are getting is PW plus sub. How do we know that this subsidy does not actually change the price? Well, let's go from the initial equilibrium, okay? So, in the domestic market, if there was no free trade at all, that would be the equilibrium, that black dot, and that would give us a price, okay? We can call this price if we really want to, call it P1. The value of the subsidy is the vertical distance, isn't it, between the two supply curves, so this black line there. All right. So, the actual value of the subsidy, in terms of the effect it has on domestic price, will only take us down here. And you see that's not below the world price at all. So this subsidy, we assume, is not large enough for it to change the world price, but effectively, it gives domestic suppliers a higher price. Okay. It's not the real price in the market, it's just the effective price that domestic suppliers are getting, PW with the subsidy on top. All right. Which means that there is no change in demand because the price stays the same. So consumer demand stays at Q2, but there is an extension, there is a change, I should say, in domestic supply. So domestic supply initially was at Q1, it's now increased all the way to Q3. Okay, with new firms, with new supplies in the market with the subsidy, there is a greater supply at the price of PW here. Okay? So no change in terms of domestic demand. So there is no loss of consumer surplus here because the price has stayed the same. But there is an increase in domestic supply from Q1 to Q3. And because, again, artificially domestic suppliers are producing more, when really they shouldn't be because they're not efficient at doing so, we can again shade in an area of loss. Okay? So this triangle this time is the deadweight welfare loss of efficiency. For exactly the same reasons as with our tariff and with our quota, this increase in supply should not have taken place because it's taking place by inefficient producers, by domestic suppliers who require a higher price because their cost is higher, because they're less efficient to produce those units than if they were going to be produced by more efficient world suppliers who have the comparative advantage. So the fact that inefficient producers are now producing these extra units implies that there is a loss of allocative efficiency, resources being ploughed into producing those units more so than what would be required if foreign producers actually produced those units instead. 
when it comes to applying some of these points, you'll see that the infant industry argument for protectionism holds here. Okay, there is an increase in domestic supply, so again, uh, firms, domestic firms, will maybe grow in size and maybe as exploit greater economies of scale to be able to compete with uh, international firms. The argument of dumping uh, is accounted for with a trade subsidy. So again, with more supply, there are less imports coming in. So the chance of suffering from dumping is less because there are less imports now. Domestic employment, you would hope, will increase, but at worst will stay the same now that domestic supplies are increasing their quantities. And the argument of improving the current account position, well, look what's happening to imports. Domestic supplies increased. Domestic demand is staying the same, but the fact domestic supplies increased has reduced the need for imports from Q1 to Q2 to now only Q3 to Q2. So the need for imports, the quantity level of imports coming in has reduced, which in theory should reduce the expenditure on imports, which should improve a current account position, certainly. So that's a trade subsidy, that's how it works on the diagram. Feel free to use that in your essay. Stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to dissect this in more detail. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.